Take one on this first day of spring. Welcome back, everyone. I am feeling the energy of the sun in my visual field, and there's nothing like it after the six months of cloud and darkness in Berlin, Germany. Welcome back. Artist Journal, March 20th. The spring equinox, broadcasting from the pirate ship in the sky, where there are hardly any clouds to look down on. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. And the progress continues. I continue to finish this an hour ahead of time here, as per the last episode here. So that is very exciting. And of course, time is of the essence. I don't know about you, but that tweet we were looking at last episode by Nick from Gamma.io was a bit of a wake-up call, as far as I'm concerned, about minting art on Bitcoin. You know, and what Nick was saying to recap was the, uh, the we're going to, the havening, the havening, which I actually brought up. I brought up the date of spring, which is actually Wednesday, March 20th, 2024, this morning at 4.06. Spring, my friends, is seven hours and six minutes old as I say this to you. So that is something to rejoice on and... You know, just one more thing on spring. You you know, like, you know when it becomes spring in Canada, and Germany's not that different, although it's a little warmer. I call it Florida light to German, uh, to, to Germans' amusement, especially here in Berlin where it's a little cooler. I, you know when it's over in Canada is when you've been psychologically defeated and you think spring will never happen. That is when spring arrives in Canada. It is not easy, and it's not that different here. So again, uh, something to rejoice on. But maybe the date we should be more focused on is April 20th. As far as Google is telling me, the next Bitcoin halvening is estimated to take place on April 20th, 2024. Only 38, is is that 38 days? You know, for all the AI out there, that's not 38 days from now. We're on, it's a month from now. Today is March 20th, so uh, so all to say, uh, if Nick is right that the fees are going to get exponentially, I guess they'll get twice as expensive. He's saying it's going to become like, mind-meltingly expensive, from what I remember of the tweet, to paraphrase. So if this is something you want to do, now is the time to be thinking about it and minting it. As Nick said... Put it on now, kind of figure out what you're going to do with it later. So just a heads up here. I may even take Friday off. Let's see it, if there are like just if, if people put out an insane amount of masterpieces, I may feel the need to put out a quick show on Friday. But I'm tempted to take off Friday. Again, we, we have to get our work on Bitcoin. Those who are interested. I know not Bitcoin's not everybody's cup of tea for the environmental reasons, but for those where... You've, you know, decide, made your own decision and feel that you, you should do this. Uh, time is of the essence. So let's begin. Uh, we have the wonderful Silva Santus, who we hadn't, I hadn't seen from for a while. I think maybe because Silva was on Zora and I had had, and this was before the follow function on Zora, uh, which I'm still sorting out. But we have a new one from Silva Santus, an open edition, 10 minted so far, only a Tezos 30. And a wonderful work that was posted by John Cates, the cowboy. Our glitch cowboy out of Taipei there, John Cates, posted this. And what a great eye John Cates had. And you have to love this work. You know, there's something about horses running that feels like a massive metaphor for what we're doing here right now. It's kind of like the ship. There's also the horse uh, just running. We're all running Uh, to our wherever it is we're going a lot of us you know again I think I haven't mentioned this for again probably a couple hundred shows one of my favorite J.G. Ballard lines from a novel around 2000 was the last illusion of air flight is that we have a destination and as I was going to say a lot of us are running and we're not the destination is not exactly clear right so but we're running and we feel like we're going somewhere. And so, again, the running horse, which Silva Santus, I think we started. I started a show, actually, maybe, you know, probably 150 episodes ago with Silva Santus' horse. So we're back with this wonderful theme. And it's beautifully glitched. 
Now, this is kind of on a squarish kind of canvas here, but when you put it on a nice wide monitor, full screen, do it. If you buy this work, put it on your widescreen monitor if you have one. And again, the hair has a life of its own these days. Every day isn't, the sun is new each day with the hair, to quote Heraclitus. Uh, so all to say, uh, look at this. Uh, just a fun, cool, pretty rad work. Again, and it, it's easy to kind of, it's easy to uh, dismiss or to, let's just be casual about, yeah, nice glitch and then move on. But let's not forget what's going on here. We have a very wide screen. Like, Silva Santuz is upsetting expectations a little bit. We're a very wide screen. And we have this kind of interesting background, which is changing colors, which turns to just pure uh, cubes there. There was uh, hexadecimal, maybe cubes. Uh, so, and then as the horse runs through the digital ether. So, you know, from landscape to just... Uh, that contrast between that green with the hexadecimal, if I'm saying that right, uh, to where we are right now, and even the inverse, inverting. Nice move, uh, so by Silver, Silva Santus. Horse Racing 3, and again, this is an open edition, only a Tezos 30, $1.52. Uh, for those that are paying attention to the fiat, we just saw another gorgeous work by Silva Santus last episode, Vacations 2. Uh, we looked at Highways. So Silva Santuz uh, is, you know, again, I never even saw the football work. We can take a quick look at that. Uh, look at all these great works. So again, Silva Santuz, this is their object page. There's a ton. I don't want to crash my computer here. Don't want to tempt the computer gods, but all to say, uh, Silva Santuz sticking with the glitch ROM and really, uh, you know, going somewhere with it. Again, kind of running somewhere, seems to be going somewhere to our earlier discussion here. Here's another one. Glitchies ate my neighbors. Almost looking like zombies on the football field here being glitched out with UFOs and everything. What is What on earth is going on here? Uh, pretty cool though. You know, another thing with the last one we were looking at, another kind of mind trick is always to imagine, imagine you're putting this in a physical museum or gallery. Again, you put this on a widescreen and you'll know what I'm talking about. You could just have an entire wall. The screen, in a sense, the ratio of this situation here on OBS is not doing uh, justice to this work because you could just imagine this one long wall in the gallery or museum and then you're really going to start to feel the power of this work. All to say, <clears throat> beautiful work here from Silva Santos, I believe out of Brazil. I brought up, and cool work here, Seven Tezos edition of Seven, and there's Kiro picking one up. Here's another one, Roll Up. So, uh, and playing with movement, interestingly, as well, uh, in a lot of these glitches, in this kind of scrolling movement that, you know, is kind of reminiscent, we might say, of Edmarola. And again, here is the X account, only 690 followers, surprisingly, on Zora out of Brazil. So go give uh, Silva Santuz a follow if you are into the glitch ROM business. So coming up, again, a little earlier here for us in Europe than usual, 2.30, usually it's 3.30, but there is the time change that happens first in North America, still at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. And I will, I believe this is pinned in the tweets. Uh, you don't know who we are, so we're going to find out who they are. Uh, you don't know who we are. And they have the Ancient Tokens GLB Virtual Exhibition, the Virtual Sculpture Show, that they put together. There's a lot of excitement over on this, so I'm excited. So it should be cool. That's with RuneTune today. Uh, so maybe by the time you watch it, it'll, it'll either be happening or will have happened, uh, but it will be in the feed if you want to listen to it. And here is You Don't Know How We Are uh, posting, doing a little music business here. A little window into the studio and the balcony and the drums on the balcony the neighbors if that is a balcony the neighbors must be uh, very happy with that but maybe they prefer it to the guy screaming every morning out the window over here so and look at how cool that is maybe that's just a room for the drums pretty cool so that is happening today and on to the comments we go uh, visual reasons our last episode Manitou Thank you so thank you very much again for sharing Tuna Walla Walla, my art, with 
music by P1 again. And thank you, P1, for that uh, stained glass pixel work that you sent me. And you're welcome, Manitol. I believe we have another winner by you here today, a really nice one. Uh, so you're more than welcome, Manitol. Just an awesome artist. Macro, so this Marco, uh, who is Limbo. Hi, Adrian, Limbo here. Great to, great to know you're learning Italian. My mother tongue. Great curation as always. Love the first piece. And I have to say I'm really enjoying right now uh, going to the gym and learning Italian and then making my little art for Bitcoin as fast as I can, while I can. That is my simple life here. Uh, so anyways, uh, maybe one day we'll talk in Italian, Marco. Uh, I'm using Babbel, Babbel Live, where they actually do classes. Uh, so it's actually like where you actually, you know, it's six people max. I recommend it uh, because again, Learning a language just by not but not speaking is basically, as I tell people, it's like reading a textbook on how to how to build muscle at the gym, right? It's kind of similar. So you just kind of got to go and you actually got to work the muscle, uh, and that includes language uh, muscles. There, Eduardo Pulitzer, also known as Ed Marola, you want to make me get up and cheer? That is one of my favorite. Uh, little anecdotes that I was saying there about how J.G. Ballard, when he was reading Naked Lunch by William Burroughs, like within the first page, he got up and cheered. And you got to love that uh, spirit there. Uh, Ballard, I just, uh, yeah, one of my favorites there. Uh, so indeed, awesome to hear, uh, Ed, and that is hilarious. Uh, Tom Battle, awesome to hear from you. And Rada, damn ex-destroying artist stream and taking money from scammers and criminals. So business as usual, really, out on the, the wild west of the internet, isn't it? And we're going to hear a little bit more about that. And also awesome to hear from you, Rada, as ever. And that beautiful work we had in last episode by you. Can't wait to see if that was the full thing or we'll find out. Uh, so paying attention there. Also comments on the X episode. And again, thank you for the response here. Uh, Psycho Futurist, thanks for featuring my work twice in this edition. I think you're back, Psycho Futurist, so uh, welcome. And Zani Yegar, uh, also great to hear from you, and thank you for the comments or the emojis. Ellie Lowe, thanks, Adrian. I support the Zach's words about not getting hung up on losing money. I sold my board ape on a start for about 0.6 ETH. And, cast, and of course, at the height, I think... So probably sold it for a couple of thousand dollars at the time, or maybe less, fifteen a thousand dollars. Thinking, Ellie Lowe did wonderful. Of course, board apes by the time at the peak we were probably worth about close from two hundred fifty to five hundred thousand uh, dollars each. So in a sense, uh, and Zach was saying you can't feel too bad about the opportunities you miss in crypto, and really. Uh, it's a, it's, it just goes to show there I lost the thing that was worth a few thousand bucks that I only paid a thousand dollars for that's now worth 20, right? Or 15 now, whatever it is, right? Uh, the Bitcoin puppet. And we have to also, you know, we have to realize there are so many opportunities. It's like, oh, you missed on that opportunity. I missed on this opportunity. It's like crypto, like, I think it's really wise as artists to be involved in the crypto ecosystem. It's a wonder. It's not, it's easier than the stock market. Uh, not financial advice, but it's you know you're not competing. Uh, you know, and you, you know, like and again, just you know, to wrap it up here, I, the most of the airdrops I've gotten, most of the kind of free stuff or whatever I've gotten is from actually making art. Say optimism. That was because I made art. Uh, you know, even the Bitcoin got the rune stone. Why? Because I minted some ordinals. Right, and they didn't even. One of them sold. Thank you, Luke Five Hundred. But some didn't even sell, and maybe that worked to my advantage, because then the ordinals stayed in my wallet. So life is ironic, right? Because if all of a sudden I'd been happy and sold them, I wouldn't have gotten into the snapshot because I wouldn't have had three ordinals. So life is super ironic, and you just have to, when bad things happen, say like this, uh, you can't get hung up on it. Anyways, let's continue with what Ellie says, and it's just great to hear from Ellie Lowe. Everything could end tomorrow. Exactly. Exactly, and often do in a case of in, a, in the case of hyped projects. That's why I love a honest Tezos art because you can't fall below the bottom. Exactly, like the value continues to be in Tezos art. It's true, uh, you know. So there's something to be said for that. 
uh, with work selling for a dollar, as we just saw with uh, Silva Sand 2s, you can pick up that work in an open edition. It's now 10 editions for $1.50, right? So it's kind of hard to beat that. Go buy some art at the art fair. How much is that going to cost you? It's going to cost you $30 to walk in the door if you don't have your little VIP pass, right? So, so again, just a sign of how many, uh, how many uh, opportunities there are here. Uh, Yacht, thank you for featuring my work, Pokebelly. Absolutely. A uh, total pleasure. Juana Pedro, thank you for showing my work, Adrian. I think we have an AI work by you, Juana. So great to hear from you. And I think you posted that in the, in the community there. So, uh, again, that works. If people, I still get uh, messages and comments sometimes in YouTube. How do uh, you know? How do you get on the roster or whatever? Or if you want to be on the show, you know, uh, how do I it's put it? Post it in the community, which we'll look at in a second here. Cider, awesome to hear from you, as ever. And Cider just put out. I was, I'm tempted. Like Cider's making huge sales. Uh, two days ago, made a nice like these kind of 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7 ETH sales. These are like eighteen, nineteen hundred, two thousand dollars sales that Cider is doing. So Cider is continuing to sell out almost, like selling all Cider's work in, you know, what's considered a difficult time for ETH. So I don't, the, the market has just become much more selective right now. So if you can get into that little area that collectors still feel that they can trade and that there's liquidity, uh, you can still do really well right now on Ethereum right? Uh, where it's really kind of slowed down a bit. Kiro, I mean, we see that with Super Rare. Why is Super Rare in Ordinals? Is it because Ethereum is the main place to be for art and we don't need any other blockchain? Of course not, right? So, and I, I, and I'm, and I applaud them for that. I, I think it's a brilliant move. Let's work with Gamma. That'll be great. Uh, we're very curious to see how that works. Uh, Kiro, Waiting for the new episode, awesome, and you're, I think you're in that episode three times, so I hope uh, you enjoyed that, and Kells is actually in this episode too, awesome to hear from you, Kells, as ever, and Nov1914, who we started with, great to hear from you, Gogo Lightus, awesome to hear from you, she works this episode, Ranix Steer, awesome to hear from you, Canix Zapata, and actually there was an important post here, the, the original post had a collection error, so I reminted it, thanks for the mention, so this was reminted, and you gotta love this cloud here. Uh, very original, interesting work from Canix Abita. So thank you for the comments. And again, if you want to uh, just get on the radar here, feel free to join the party as Bulls is here uh, sharing work here from Zora. So cool, always has the dancing ants uh, from Photoshop selection brought into the work. I just absolutely love that. And they're across here. Here's Juan Pedro. This work is in this show as well as this work here. So I don't want... And we have a work by Martin Joe, a different work. And also, yeah, so all to say uh, there is great opportunity or if you just want to share your work. I mean, that's the hardest part, especially if you're starting out. I think a macro Matry here who just st started out, this is a great place for you. Uh, because, you know, starting out, nobody sees the work. If you feel like you're not getting the reach, feel free to join the party there. A uh, big thank you. Uh, to Tegenhoff and the Gift Gallery for they are doing a Paul Clay uh, homage. And I have added a piece here. And I think this is actually going to be later. I may have screwed up the order a little bit here. Uh, but this is we're going to see more on this in a few, uh, in about five or six tabs here. We're going to come back to the collection here. A uh, little out of order as I, you see a little behind the scenes there of all the work of organizing and preciously organizing these tabs in the proper order. Uh, this was posted by our good Twitter, uh, my guilty pleasure Twitter follow, uh, Alan Survey, Alan Survey, who posted this uh, France 24 uh, uh, article from Agence France Press, Vienna gets first museum on shock actionist art movement. And I thought this was quite interesting. This is uh, Vienna, Vienna actionists push the limits, not shying away from using blood, urine, and excrement. So this is probably blood. Uh, so all to say, like, you can still shock. Like, that's pretty shocking. It hits us, you know, and that's why I'm kind of mentioning this. Like, it's quite interesting, isn't it? When you consider this as blood, uh, like, it affects us on a very deep level. A biological level rather than this just simply being paint. Uh, it's, and it seems extreme, right? Painting with real blood. So 
truly shocking. And I thought so. Herman Nitsch. I, I wonder if that was Herman Nitsch there, who is one of these kind of wild artists. And they're from the 1960s, interestingly. Uh, and let's actually read a couple of lines here. There's hardly anything comparable to the radicalism of the Vienna, Viennese actionists, said art historian Eva Badura Triska. She picked the close to 100 works on display for the opening. Looks like quite a show. Uh, like, you know, they dealt with the bo- both the body and the human psyche very, very intensely and without taboos. Very interesting. Uh, and kind of, you know, again, you don't even want to say it, but like, Pretty nice brushwork or, you know, splashing. Like, it's a nice piece, even if this was just red paint. The blood kind of makes it ten times more intense. Uh, So, all to say, uh, wow, someone was even jailed. Okay, yeah, so all sorts of sketchiness here. Uh, Nietzsche has exhibited, he's probably the most famous of them that I've heard of. Gwenter Bruce, Otto Mull, Hermann Nietzsche, and Rudolf Schwarzkugler push the limits. So, yeah. Very interesting there. Switching gears, uh, Dina Chang, a glimpse into our creative process at Seta Studio. So this is, I think, the collaborator with Dina Chang, captured here, I think, Tim. Here it is, Timothy's Accenti, uh, captured here as part of a wider campaign for Adobe. So Dina has helped co-host the show when Runetune was away there in Asia. So she was mentioning this. And here, Adobe Creative Cloud, and I think that's Dina there. And there's Tim and everything they're up to. So uh, pretty cool, isn't it? The world gets a little smaller when you see stuff like this. So, and I think Dina was working on like an Oscar party or something or something like Grammy after party. Who knows? All to say uh, up to all sorts of interesting stuff there in L.A. Back to Bitcoin. So this was what I was looking for yesterday uh, by Lucrece. Lucrece. Uh, who was putting together a collection on Magic Eden. Now the floor is 0.2. And you see uh, just very minimal works here. So again, uh, you know, keeping down the minting fees. And how many are there? Uh, Total supply of 150, right? So again, opportunity uh, knocks here with these uh, Bitcoin collections and everything. Maybe you only have a month before things get even more expensive. You know, limiting options. So looking pretty good there on Magic Eden. Uh, Continuing on, LA Low, I pack my case, I check my face, I look a little bit older, I look a little bit colder. So that's the killers. I didn't notice, but trash bags were, trash beige baga were started more than one and a half years ago. I feel like I was there. I feel like this show was there when LA Low started. Uh, We've been showing LA Low since pretty early a little over a year, I'd say. Never thought about it in this key, but for all this time, it was the only one kind of stable thing in my life. And I know the feeling. When you feel like life isn't necessarily going your way or, you know, just things that you can't even control in your life, one of the beautiful things about art is it's kind of a source of stability. It's kind of like anything can happen around you, but I... But with that, but, you know, but you kind of have a constant there, a kind of a source of stability of uh, in in your art. So, uh, Ellie, uh, interesting comment there as I fix my hair. I thought this was interesting. Mikey de la Creme. So, of course, 6529, this went around. You own an NFT on Tezos. Uh, Actually, let's look at the poll quickly. Uh, 50%. Not bad, actually. Pretty good actually, because you have to get a different wallet on Tezos. Mahi de la Crema, a few. Uh, But this was really 7,156. And the important thing to remember here, though, is Mikey de la Crema, you know, one of the main collectors there on Tezos, as well as great AI artist, great artist. The thing to remember with Mikey is he is like often like buying and selling. So he's probably bought something like 20 or 30,000 works, and this is what it's down to. Uh, So pretty amazing uh, for to have this huge of a collection. Uh, You know, maybe 15 or 20,000 Mikey has actually bought, but his son uh, sold a ton too, because Mikey has the eye. 
so uh, pretty cool. Uh, that's a huge collection. Tukes, I have created over 3,000 NFTs since June 2021. 3,000? That's incredible. That's inspiring. Across more than 100 collections on three different blockchains. This is how it's done. This has brought in over $180,000 from selling my art. Along the way, you know, like, if people are wondering about the space and the opportunities, this is like a real-world story. Along the way, I've made many friends, met numerous collectors and artists, and seen my work sold by Christie's and, <clears throat> and Sotheby's. I mean, this is all true. My life changed forever when I entered the NFT space. A stark contrast to my early days when my art... Appreciated worldwide since 2014 and exhibited in over 20 countries, earned me exposure instead of money. When my son was born in 2017, I would eat once a day so he could eat twice. And I believe Tukes is out of Brazil. Uh, we had Tukes on the show, a very philosophical artist, I might add. I've always been the underdog, the struggling underground artist who didn't even consider himself an artist. Just a troubled, anxious, depressed, and addicted mind finding solace in art without any formal training in drawing or painting, nor a university degree. I think a lot of people can relate to this. You know, the, for, the forgotten, right? Uh, one of the forgotten, one of the ignored, uh, you know, and had an, maybe a decent CV, but, you know, but since 2021, the NFT space blessed me with a new lease on life, making what seemed unbelievable at first a reality. Indeed, now I'm still curious, eager to learn more and delve deeper into Ethereum Layer 2's, a brilliant idea, Bitcoin, another brilliant idea, and be fast about it, and Ordinals, which is also Bitcoin. This journey has changed my life forever, and I'm committed to making this path, this my path for life, beyond any point of no return. I am hopeful. Indeed. So am I. So am I. And just the fact that even if we crash back down to previous lows, just the fact that Bitcoin was going back up and breaking the record in itself is a interesting and kind of a, and a remarkable uh, situation here. Now, interestingly, so here's a quick, uh, so of course, a lot of us have uh, uh, Taya coins from Taya.cafe, or I think actually the Taya which is the new version of Hicket Nunc, or Han, which is a, for those that don't know, it is a platform on Tezos. There's Object, which is a platform. Uh, Hen or Teia, is actually the new version of it, is another platform. And they gave a, a token, a crypto, to uh, people who have bought and sold on the chain and done various things on the chain, on, on their platform. Uh, so this is the crypto, Taya, Taya, Taya holders, this is a red flag. So this is a crypto trader. Uh, and this is Ryan, who is uh, one of the people behind Taya. It's kind of weird how raising money from angels and VCs, it's much more viable for me now than it was a few years ago. But now I'm like, for what? The money would just get in the way at this point. I really don't want it right now, especially knowing how much paperwork might get involved if we say yes. So all to say, uh, Basically, if I had to sum this up, is uh, they're not looking. If if I have Ryan's uh, if, to sum it up, it this is a governance token is how they are uh, how Ryan is presenting it. Not a not a value. Not not a speculative token. And as such. Ryan's saying, well, there's no point speculating here because we don't even want that. But I thought to myself, though, um, I'm not sure if you can uh, decide that in a sense. And I own Taya tokens, by the way, uh, for transparency here. Uh, but if it's, if it's a governance token, ultimately, that means if someone owns more than 50% of it, they can basically, for all intents and purposes... Uh, control the direction of that platform. So, and doesn't that inherently have financial value? So all to say, and I think they've done a wonderful job of fixing up that website from Hen uh, and Taya. They've done a brilliant job uh, at, over at Taya. But I'm not sure you can divorce governance over the, pro over the protocol that governs the platform and the direction of it and value. Because that, that platform is worth something. So I'm just not sure if you can just say, well, we call it a governance 
token, but then it's not going to be worth any, and just just declare it's not going to be worth anything. I I'm not sure you can do that. Uh, so I guess we'll find out. But uh, interesting. So this person was concerned because it wasn't turning into a speculative. They they sounded like there was reservation from the Taya people on the speculative nature of the crypto. So just kind of an interesting thread there. Santiago, now Wi-Fi hat, with hat. I still think Tezos is cool. I can never tell if Santiago's trolling here. Uh, yesterday, I entered for like 20 minutes a telegram with Tezos people. They were great, but I couldn't stay. They had no idea who I was. You don't research Tezos artists. It's not my van- vanity. I'm a public Tezos artist beyond how I feel about it. And there is a, I mean, Santiago is probably one of the most prominent artists on the Tezos blockchain or just in Web3 art. Uh, and I don't know if this is true. I, let's just say it is, though. I, but put it this way. The reason I bring it up is there is a disconnect, it seems, between Tezos the crypto and whatever it is that they're doing and the artists and put it this way let me just for illustration bring it all back home if you if if object disappeared off of tezos as someone i use tezos you know regularly i've collected an enormous amount of art i've posted a fair amount of art on tezos I can't tell you, though, like Tezos is a part of my life in terms of me. Look, look this show is mostly object uh, t- tabs you're going to see here. Uh, but with the, all that being said, with, you know, object and Tezos being a part of my life, if you ask me what else is going on on Tezos, I couldn't tell you. I, I would say there's like some sort of decentralized exchange. There's a couple of them, you know, three something, right? There's also a meme coin called Poll. And I don't even know if there's anything else going on. So there is a, all to say there's a disconnect between the what's going on with the arts on Tezos and what's what else is going on on Tezos, if anything. And I don't know if anything is. I, and I say that genuinely. So just an interesting uh, situation here. Uh, so it does kind of illustrate a point whether this is true or not. I assume it is. I, again, you can never tell with Santiago because he trolls a lot. I spent like $20 minting another post by Santiago here. Again, I can't tell if this is trolling, but it's, again, for the sake of illustration, interesting. I spent like $20 minting and listing three NFTs on Solana. All good, but keep the low gas fees of, out of your presentation. So, of course, minting on Solana used to be like a penny and or like something like that, a few cents. It was like Tezos. But, of course, the token has risen in price, and I don't know if this is true, uh, but wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be interesting if all of a sudden uh, the fees on Solana start getting expensive as the token does, and people are talking about $1,000 Solana? What does that do to your token, right? So uh, <laughs> so anyway, let's continue here. And I, of, of course, I follow Rata. That is an X glitch when you load up uh, 50 tabs here. Santiago carrying the Tezos eco- ecosystem above the flame. So just a hilarious uh, post here uh, from Rata on Santiago. Also from Rata, this is Little Cakes, finally able to check out Rata's gallery. While I'm super stoked to have my piece Gathering of the Chicken Profits displayed, I'm really impressed with how and where each piece was placed. Choice of wall colors, etc. It's my favorite on cyber show I've ever seen. So pretty cool. And it does look very nice. There's some Dan control there. It looks beautifully displayed here with a lot of care. That looks like maybe a rat of work. And there's a big rat in the center. Uh, hilarious. Very nicely displayed here. Right to the edge there, interestingly. Uh, two Dan control works of animals. So we'll have to take a look at this. And here, I would load it up, but it, it, is, it is a computer killer, these on cyber galleries. But if a video shows up, I'll be happy to show that here. And again, uh, there's some rata PFPs there. So all hilarious there. Uh, continuing on, Haiti Rocket. Uh, internet on March 27th. So that's great to see. Uh, Haiti Rocket back on the scene has been a little quiet on the object account. So that'll be awesome to see. Now, this did go around, so the reason Santiago has the dog with hat, Aki the dog, so this went, this work here for, actually we have the tweet from uh, Artie Hands for $4.3 million. And so just the, and of course this is based on a meme coin on Solana, as far as I understand. So 
as you see here, uh, this person at Cheap Beach uh, posted a reserve of five ETH and then it was met within four minutes. And then, then a bidding war started, or sorry, it was met within seven hours. And then a bidding war started, for, and which turned into several million dollars. So, uh, of course, this went around and everything. And there's the foundation is happy. They probably did really well with their th fees there. And uh, there they even have the Wi-Fi with hat on the foundation logo there. Uh, so, arty hands, remember they'd rather spend $4.3 million on a poor photo of a dog in a hat than buy your art. I... You know, I love arty hands, but, you know, the, well, people will be saying the same thing if they bought art with it. Like, you know, there's hungry people out there and now you guys are spending millions of dollars on art. In a sense, you can always kind of make this argument. To me, again, I just go, what a great place to be. They, there is enough money in this ecosystem for people to basically blow $4.3 million. And you never know if this is kind of somewhat of an insider trade, but let's assume it's not. It probably isn't, but who knows? Uh, 1,200 ETH. Uh, all to say, what? where would you rather be as an artist? The place where the people are bo blowing $4.3 million on a photo of a dog in a hat. Uh, so finally on that, it couldn't mark a kind of top. This was done on March 19th and, or sorry, when was the March 18th? Like it kind of hit the top there. Uh, this is like right before the crash, I think, that we've seen in crypto. Who knows if it's temporary or not, but maybe a sign of a top when that sort of action happens on a financial level. So we got some memes. Of course, walk great at the memes <laughs> here for a million, 1.2 million Tezos. Uh, and well, that is what it is listed for. Sold for only 1.21, addition of 52. So walk applying the treatment here of the dog with hat. And we have a few others. Here's uh, Manadol and P1, just an awesome uh, collaboration there. Tung Mang, the Calico Cat. This version is actually, I would maintain, maybe a little bit more exciting than the one that went for $4 million. Beautiful work, just brilliant color by Manadol there and awesome music by P1. I think that's how it's working. Chiptune BGM by P1. Exactly. Pixelated and animated by Manadol. Uh, so that is addition of 121. And here is Violet Trip uh, with work. And you see the Ethereum logo in the background and the dog with hat done in a pixelated way. That's on Zora, four minted. And here's one more, Pixelare. Uh, and there is the price, 1200 ETH, which is $4.3 million. A picture of a dog with a woolly hat sold for 4.3. Nice, uh, nice versions here. Nice uh, homages, so to speak, to that sale. Uh, very nice work. And finally, <laughs> Acid Boy uh, posts a photo of himself on, uh, and it went actually on the homepage of Foundation. So, and there was actually a bid on this for 0 0.01 ETH. So it continues here. Uh, again, as an artist, where would you rather be? Uh, you want to be where, like, it's not a bad place to be, and your costs are nothing. Go again. I always have to. We always have to remind ourselves, our friends in the contemporary art trad art scene, going paying for their studio, paying for their supplies. Then they make a work that doesn't work, and then all that money's gone. They have to paint over it. At least the paint is, you know, spent. You know, uh, if something doesn't work for us, uh, we would make a new file that costs us zero. The you know a penny maybe of electricity. Uh, here's the homage to Paul Clay uh, by Gift Gallery and Tegenhoff. Uh, so again, uh, so thanks for the invite there. There's my piece there. And there's Sabato. I brought up a couple. We can't bring up all of them. Uh, there's RJ there and just beautiful uh, pieces here. Uh, so this, I believe, is going to go live on Friday. Exhibition Culture Museum Bur Bern in Switzerland. So actually, a exhibition Couture Museum in Bern, Switzerland. So that's pretty cool, too. Kind of feels like a museum exhibition. Like, will that be in a museum? It, it seems that way. I brought up a couple of works. Here's Somfe. That kind of jumped out at me. Two observers in the sky entire. Uh, beautiful colors on this one by Somfe. So an interpretation, a homage to Paul Clay, interestingly. This is the one I did, Senezio, that famous, uh, that famous portrait. 
Uh, and of course, just giving uh, different treatments here, different kinds of pixelation here, all in one work. And here is a pretty interesting one by Sabato, Fish Oils. Uh, so maybe there's a famous fish work by Paul Clay. Uh, and so playing with that idea, I saw a couple of fish works. And then extracting the oil from the fish here, where we get our omega-3s. Uh, so interesting piece there. A nice kind of noise in the background there, too. Edition of 25 by Sabato. So cool work there. Uh, and so here we begin digital painting. Uh, this is Rat Cloak. Uh, bones. So another kind of dark looking work here with the faces, uh, you know, kind of either distorted or half missing here. Uh, kind of a concerning work here from Rat Cloak, beautifully painted, looking like in Photoshop in a field. Kind of looks like a doctor's office or something. Uh, very dark and intense work, as we've come to expect from Rat Cloak. Nice kind of brushwork there. Just a great digital painter. Edition of 10 selling for 20 Tezos each, and this is sold out. So nice work, cool title. Da Taste, El, El Arriero. El Arriero. Uh, this is an edition of 10 for 4 Tezos. And another interesting work here. Uh, interesting figure with a cobra in the hands, kind of loosely painted and going through the wilderness here with hope on the bags and miser miseria, the uh, miserable donkey here carrying the load, an interesting uh, painting, nice painting style, uh, nice color of the sky from uh, De Taste. Here is Rosatio. I missed this work, I think, last week. This is called Catastrophe. Playing, I think I missed this work. Uh, I think that must have been part of the cat show, maybe that uh, Rinny Fish was a part of there. So there is a cat with a big eyeball and almost like one of those 16th, 17th century collars there. And the egg and everything. So just cool work by Rosetio, uh, digital painting, collage, animation, 1500 by 2000, 12 frames, reserve of 0.3 ETH. And that is on foundation. And here's one, I think this was posted in the community, Makara Hypermedia. And let's see if this loads up here. The computer is struggling here, so we are going to keep try and keep it to an hour here. Let's see how we see how we do. Um, and so here, oh, huge file, no wonder. And so interesting work here, kind of operating system windows, another eyeball, Tezos logo, and everything almost looks like a server farm for a head, but maybe it's something different. Hypermedia, indeed, uh, edition of twelve selling out at six Tezos. Nice work. And here is Rustic, Digital Art, Map of Mar del Plata. Very cool work here. Unfortunately, again, we don't have the Maximize on uh, Zora, but we'll go over here. And so pretty cool landscape work. Nice mark making in here by Rustic. I like uh, where this is going. The, it kind of This kind of scribbliness uh, contrasts nicely with this, these background colors. And even just, there's a real organic feel to this digital artwork here, a true digital painting. And here's Recollapse, picture that surrounds my head. This also came out on March 18th. And this is an edition of 10 for four Tezos, four gone. And so an animated painting here. And again, it looks like digital painting that is emulating physical uh, brushwork and texture, interestingly, and animated. So a bit of a hybrid here with Recollapse, and so interesting piece here, nice color, uh, Fortezos, edition of 10. Here's uh, Uxine, this is a free mint for people that own, I think, Dread.exe, all-time high. I saw a free mint there and I thought, wow, free mint for Uxine, but I think you have to own one, so uh, own a previous work, so kind of a nice, loose work here. Seems like Uxine is experimenting with looseness, so to speak, here. And these different renditions, these different layers, uh, this is, you know, a great solution here uh, for your gifts is uh, different variations, different layers get turned on uh, in the GIF and then animated, again, contrasting with the static area here, uh, the movement and the stillness contrasting. That is an addition of nine. I'm not sure if we looked at this, but Rata posted it uh, in the uh, in the group there. And again, I follow Rata, of course. I grabbed the bananas from Amanda. Nice piece. Nice grab there. And I always love stamps, too. And so here, 
A uh, nice piece, nice digital painting of bananas here with a stamp. Structure. Uh, here's Nov 1914, Campesina. So, of course, we started with Nov 1914 last episode. Only nine days, though, still uh, for this edition of one. Not exactly sure what it is, but it looks like a couple of figures here. And again, a very rich Nov 1914 work with some beautiful experimentation here. Again, would just hang really well with Zozo. Uh, here's another one, Romance 1. This went to Aw Heck for nine Tezos. Again, it feels like these gradient figures are getting richer and richer here, and more dancers here. Beautiful mark making here, and everything. Uh, just a super interesting and challenging artist. Uh, romance, and look at the side. Just awesome. Uh, going to Aw Heck. This is Austin. Just a post on X here. Kind of looks like one. Now, I think Austin uses the fire extinguisher uh, as a painting tool. And so here it looks like a picture of the fire extinguisher with paint all over it, repeated over and over, making a work. Actually looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Uh, so sharing that here, it looks like a digital painting. No Puedo Hablar. This is by Amanda Hamann. And I think we looked at some works by Amanda before. This is a combination of analog and digital. So of... Uh, drawing here. Pretty sure this is graphite and this looks physical and then combined with this digital area here. All together, uh, working pretty well together and just a little bit of color in there. Analog collage and digital illustration edition of five for ten Tezos and one sold so far. Here's Zed. I love Zed uh, any or NT. He's repairing our unfriendly chat with his positivity. So pretty cool work here. Uh, again, those instantly recognizable blue and white colors there with this light blue there. Uh, just very cool. Uh, from Zed. And here's Shilly Preston with Dawes Coda, American Nostalgia. So a collaboration here for Shilly Preston. Uh, kind of an interesting piece, interesting mix of digital superimposed onto painting or collage. Uh, interesting work there, kind of a crypto art skull uh, for good measure. And here's Relax, who could also probably hang in the same room, room here where we have Carvaggio, uh, Carvaggio's uh, Jesus. I think this is in Rome, I, if I remember right. I think so. When you walk in to uh, Piazza del Popolo, the main entrance into Rome, the gate to the old city, there's a church right on your left. I think this is where that is. Anyways, nice purple version with a big red almost like a protest sign or like a uh, just a big brushwork, dig, uh, physical brush with almost like a digital brushwork here or a light, who knows, going through Christ. So interesting piece from Relax. Here's Ed Marola with a work, and let's, let's hit play here. Edition of 21. Zooming in a bit. Interesting work here. And then zooming out. I wonder if Ed's using the whole procreate uh, dreams for the animation there. So kind of a cryptic work. As the purple music entered my ears, a new dimension arose. And again, a lot of experimentation here. Kind of looks like a figure here, but exported and everything. Uh, one going to line X for six Tezos edition of 21. Kind of a wild work here. Part of this series, they are dreaming us. Let's just take a look here. Right, and we saw this epic work uh, last episode. So very interesting rollout, isn't it? of this series and they are dreaming us kind of getting things started. I think Ed took a bit of a break and now is releasing everything. This is a work in progress from Nick Nicholas Dietrich. So again, we started with that super enigmatic pixel artwork the other day. We see recognizable colors here. Now playing with the boardroom, boardroom view at night, a good way to go yet. So again, uh, pretty interesting to see where this is going to go. Again, a work in progress, a uh, great, uh, mysterious, ambiguous subject matter here. Super interesting. Uh, this is by RJ, uh, Men of Culture, after Hans Holbein the Younger, the Ambassadors. 
So interesting title there. And we have, of course, this super famous uh, work here of the skull. It, was it like this? I've actually seen this in the museum. Uh, I guess that's how it goes across the work. Uh, so Hans Holbein, I can't remember what museum I saw it in, uh, but an interesting work here. And again, given RJ's uh, treatment with the uh, snow on the screen and the pastiche here in green and black, uh, edition of two, Uxin picking one up, 33 Tezos. Land picks, this is Francois Gamma uh, with a work and looking like taking a photo and giving it some treatment here. Beautiful colors from Francois Gamma, edition of 30 for two Tezos 50. And let's continue another interesting piece. So this is P3. So we've seen a few by Francois Gamma using this structure here and love the color in this one with the brown background creating a completely different work with a similar kind of animation, different processing, and one going, one transferred to John Cates, interestingly, uh, edition of 30. Some works by Gogolitis are about to go on uh, exchange.art on Solana. New series, Reveries, Celestial Reveries. And here is the first one, Reverie number one, supply of eight at half a sol each. And let's let it load here and see what happens. Here we go. And so you see the beauty of Gogo Lytus's work here. So playing with a, kind of a astronomical theme here. Uh, so cool work, kind of minimal. And again, you can see the experiments with uh, abstraction and you know, kind of psychedelic abstraction now returning to space as a theme. The planets, the universe. And so here's another one. I think this is number two. And this is price of one sol, this supply of four. And this is, looks like a one of one, reverie number three. Interesting sales dynamics there in the different editions. And let this load up. And I think we're good. I think this is loaded up. And there we are. So another interesting piece, interesting composition uh, in terms of the canvas size here. So a few works by Gogo Lytus on Solana. Let's keep running here. Here's Brain Dead. And this is, it's interesting. I feel like they just started putting the owner up here, which is kind of a nice tribute to the owners here. Again, object, the web designers are uh, very thoughtful in what they're doing. Uh, you are broke. So of course, you know, one month you're rich in crypto, the next, the next month you're broke. So maybe this is uh, the next, and then the next month you're rich. That is life in crypto. So try again, try again, exactly. To our earlier discussion there, nice subject matter here. Very modern subject matter. There's a credit card, a uh, reader. I like this a lot in terms of uh, subject matter. Svezer, the mass, some more kind of enigmatic pixel art here. Uh, mysterious kind of iconography, kind of feels like a little bit of, how would you put it, almost like a magical kind of feeling, just black and white and a lot of symbols here. The yin and the yen, the flower, uh, a lot of symbolism, just interesting kind of mysterious work. Edition of 10, three Tezos, one gone. And this was Clint Fulkerson. I can't remember who posted this, but it was cool. I think it was Kyle Flemmer who was talking about writing an essay on pixel art, which sounds awesome. PVP, 1024, just an interesting uh, abstract artist here. Uh, abstract pixel artwork. Uh, so nice piece there. And here's Macro Mitrai Bufo. So another interesting, uh, interesting abstract pixel artwork. Uh, I think you could call that pixel artwork. Maybe it uses some ASCII text. Uh, interesting kind of uh, uh, diagonals here, or interesting, I guess you'd say pixel marks. Because again, when you see these kind of diagonals like this, you do think of different, maybe like ASCII. And I think actually Macro Matry has mentioned that. So that's an addition of 10 for one Tezos. And this was posted, I think, in the community. Great post. Who was it? Lucas Lejeune posted this. This is a friend of Lucas's, Simon Lazarus, Gallery Data, which I hadn't heard of before, Overload. Uh, so let's see if this plays. And so no volume here. So interesting contrast going on over here through this kind of very fuzzy airbrush. Just check the time here for the Twitter space and the uh, interesting kind of square pixels, right, that are flashing here, kind of hard edge versus soft edge. Interesting piece, hey? 
So new kinds of abstraction here we are discovering. Addition of five for 50 Tezos, two gone. Nice work, one transferred. Uh, here's Braun, Screen Breaker 06, addition of 15 for two Tezos. So continuing the Screen Breaker series, again, more abstract pixel artwork. Uh, again, static and dynamic pixels uh, working together here, interesting colors. And also the 1920 by 1080, interestingly. Here's uh, Coda Nekazono, CBZ number three. So continuing this interesting series here of uh, with this background that kind of phases in and out and then kind of curved over here. So a different kind of series here from Coda Nakazono and the center here just being static. It's kind of hypnotic actually. It feels like this whole structure is moving like a few pixels to the left or right. It's actually kind of dizzying to look at this. Uh, addition of 10 for two Tezos. Very interesting work. Here's, I think this is LB. If my computer could talk. So interesting minimal piece here with a cursor going uh, in a spiral here on uh, web w95link.cur. This is a free mint on Zora from LB. And continuing on, Daniel W. with a beautifully colored work here, Corporate Bestiary, the janitor. And here you see a lightning bolt and a crown over top. Look at the texture here. This is pretty amazing. The texture is off the charts. I guess it's this, you know, paper here, which I assume is digital paper. Pretty effective. Look at that. So nice move here. And there is the title. And, and gorgeous color here from this really interesting corporate series, corporate bestiary series from Daniel W. Fortezos. And that is an edition of 18. Here is Jake Studios as we continue to run through this show. Shift happens. And again, playing with this internet iconography, looks like a JPEG logo, a phone, and then just it looks like stream of consciousness drawing here. Again, surreal illustration. Look at these clouds here. Not worrying about it having to make sense. And that is a lot of the charm of it. Even the person here looking the, like the subject here is conforming to the uh, canvas. And interest, almost like keyboard letters here, just following uh, kind of, again, stream of consciousness here. This one was burned. There may be a new one. This is an artist I hadn't seen before, Emir Gork, Unfinished Work. Someone retweeted this. Uh, let's see if it loads. So someone's sleeping here. And the figure in the art, running and jumping. This is the idea coming to you in the night. And then realizing. And then kind of an unusual one, isn't it? Very interesting. Unfinished work haunting you. I, yeah, I, I can relate to that one. Addition of five for five Tezos. Here's Martin Joe. I think we might have seen this earlier. It has been posted on Solana. Earthly Pleasures, The Endless Waiting. So kind of an edgy work here from uh, Martin Joe. And again, you see almost this Hans Belmer influenced kind of body figure here. And this person that has a knife for a hand, like a pirate or something, and the cloud and everything. Interesting brushwork there. Uh, cool experimentation or cool drawing, I should say, from Martin Joe, The Endless Waiting. A half a soul auction is on. And continuing on, here's Kells. Kells, I didn't realize that Kells was posting work. Squire Encounter Artists at Window. Uh, so this is listed on uh, on Object, and I've been the reason I know is because uh, Kells sent me one actually this morning and sent to Mikey Wilson. It does help. I'm not saying don't do it for me, and I don't show uh, everybody's work, but it does help uh, sending it to other people and to collectors to get your work out there. Some people don't like it though. I can speak from my own experience. I've sent out works and then someone puts it up for 10 cents. So obviously not appreciating. So uh, take that. So I don't really do it anymore. I, so interestingly, but it is a way to get on the radar. Also for this show, I post on the community. Anyways, let's look at what Kells is doing here. Because uh, interestingly, it looks like digital painting. And then you have the yellow border. And some interesting mark making and nice kind of outline here that doesn't follow perfectly, which adds to the aesthetic appeal. So kind of an interesting work and the color doesn't completely conform to the shape here, which looks like a figure that is sitting crossing their legs and here is the big head. Do we have a title? Squire Encounters Artist at Window. So interesting piece here. Thank you for the send kills. And here's another one from February. Arrival at the Green Place. 
And so also, interesting con- contrast on this one with these, kind of what, like what we saw in that earlier piece with the fuzziness and the square pixel, we got that same contrast here. Interesting effect. So cool kind of digital painting drawing, and there the squares are large. And again, what is Arrival at the Green Place? So enigmatic title here from Kells, and that is one Tezos, and there are two left. So very cool. Uh, Renki, Ki Ishigi, a couple more from Renki here, who we've been following for over a year here. Uh, you know, there are artists like uh, Ed Marola Santiago, who've been on the show like a million times. Renki is one of those artists. Just keeps delivering in- interesting information here. Interesting visual information. You know, so con- it continues here with Renki. Addition of one doesn't usually, just puts them on the market, Doesn't waits for offers, basically. Koshiyama is another one. Remember the one that August Ground picked up? of the, it's just like a strobe almost, a flashing strobe. It was a brilliant work. I almost started with that work. Anyway, cool work by Renke. This is uh, Morgan Higby Flowers, and there is the title. I think this was posted actually in the community. So interesting work, and here we're on Taya here. So kind of a wild work here. Uh, where you almost have analog video and then you have some illustration. Look at this. It's a pretty wild work, isn't it? Wild video. So thank you for posting that. Only half a Tezos, uh, 97 left. Uh, So photosensitive, indeed. Uh, Let's continue. Uh, This is also risotto. Uh, We won't leave this on too long. Someone retweeted this, kind of looked interesting. I think Uxine might have retweeted that. Uh, Machinas qui que contemple. So a new one by Helio Santos. Remember we saw the birds in red or planes. And then here cloud detected. So kind of a different work. Kind of has a bit of an AI feel to it. And of course has having that surveillance camera, AI surveillance tool feel to it too. Uh, interesting work. Uh, addition of 30 for 10 Tezos. And already several selling. So nice work there. Uh, Kurt Hustle Collective has a new work. This is the place. And this is new. Very rich audio as ever. Kind of soothing. Almost a Brian Eno feel to that synth. Very rich. Very nice. <laughs> I thought this start, I thought I remembered a different part of this. We don't have a ton of time. Uh, we have passed the hour mark. Okay, anyway, check it out, Kurt Hustle Collective. There it is, the start. Yes. So all very interesting as usual. Sky Goodman and Score working together here, collaborating. Speculative Portrait Number One, Daydream in the Fifth Dimension. Pretty cool work. Let me get this going here, and no volume on here. And so we see all the sparkliness and almost kind of cool like scan going across this bust here. Speculative Portrait, cool title, and interesting colors. Cool colors here and everything, that is 30 second loop. And this is an addition of 12 and several selling here so far. Uh, there's Robness V2 putting an offer in. So that is pretty cool. So taking offers. Phosphor Operator, Stargazer. And this was also posted out, cool work. A different take on the video glitch, kind of a, uh, feels like more of a close up. And there we see eyes. Uh, it's amazing how just doing something as simple as zooming in or getting closer can change a work, uh, especially if you're doing like screen capture type work, which I suspect this is, I'm not positive. Uh, again, Phosphor Operator, 150 Tezos, edition of one. This is Let's Glitch at CircuitBet Media. So whoever mints the most editions of this piece is entitled to a camera. So there are 55 minted so far. This is on Zora, so free mint. So if you are the person that mints the most, you get a free camera. As far as I understand from Donia, Let's Glitch at .eth. Uh, Pretty cool. And here are examples of the camera in action. And you also get the artwork. Psychofuturist. Centaurs have two rib cages so they can dance twice as hard. Uh, So another interesting work, kind of fusing mythology 
and music here. You know who I think of when I see the uh, constellation there? I also think this could hang in the same room as Marcel Pine uh, Pinel, Marcelo Pinel. Pinello, uh, the great uh, psychedelic artist there. Uh, interesting. So, uh, addition of 10 for 20 Tezos. Nice work. Uh, Salawaki, a very questionable acquisition. So, again, playing with the trout, uh, putting a hat on the trout, a uh, trout with hat, 100% fish. So, the uh, the memory continues here. And Sab Sabato picking one up there. And so, selling out at 5 Tezos. Addition of 20. Nice work. Martin Joe, stir my heart. This one I had missed. I went to Martin Joe's page. This was done for Valentine's Day. We could have even started with this on Valentine's Day. So a GLB by Martin Joe, uh, you know, with the lover being kind of filled with arrows here. Stir my heart. Uh, so, uh, yeah, next Valentine's Day, I'll have to look at what Martin Joe is doing. Kind of your uh, classic Valentine's Day artist, you could argue. Daydream Disconnection. This is by Tooks. So I think we saw this on X, you, but again, here it is on Solana, on exchange.art, or at least a, a work similar. Nice brushwork here. So of course, Tukes, who we were seen from earlier in the show, uh, you know, continues to experiment. Highest bid, two and a half sol. That's $429. So Tukes continuing to kill it. Here's another work posted on X. Are you still into art? Because I'm still into art. Uh, look at this, 51 retweets, 445 uh, likes there. Nice work, uh, Tukes. Nice AI painting. Just an awesome artist. This work is older from Okot, but I hadn't seen it before. It was posted online, and this is at a reserve of 0 0.05. And interestingly, before we go into it, AI text to image tools. So this looks like, I assume it's raw AI, but not positive. And the title is interesting too, Digital Connections. Uh, so kind of a homage to Diego R Rivera, the mural painter, I think out of Mexico, if I'm not mistaken, the great mural painter. And I think Frida Kahlo's husband, I think, uh, for a while, or at least boyfriend, not exactly sure. Anyways, an interesting t take on Diego Rivera's work here with a modern version, with people looking at their tablets and phones uh, I thought quite beautifully painted, uh, by the way. Uh, you know, I don't, so I, th I wasn't sure if this is pure raw AI, because you could also take this and paint yourself over top of it, but you probably don't need to, because that does look like a beautiful canvas. Once again, uh, here's no, hy no hygiene, Fremont on Arzora. Interesting uh, dimensions here, isn't it? Uh, so again, you think of just, Great experimentation here, loving the huge margin and just trying different things out. Loving the dimensions, kind of looks like a 16 by 9, almost made for a TV perhaps. Uh, made to be displayed, digital painting and AI. So combining some painting in there too by No Hygiene, this is on Zora, three minted. And here's also uh, Sky Goodman, who of course I follow, that is a glitch on X. I love my machine, I hate my machine, just a cool AI artwork here. Nice kind of contrast of the black and white kind of colors, gray colors with the color in the pants and the, maybe the backpack there. Here is, as we wrap up here, here is uh, 0009. This is on verse, so 0009, I think this is 0009. It is, uh, no, sorry, this is, uh, we have 0009 coming up. This is Margaret Murphy, who I'd never seen before. This is on verse two, Los Angelizing. So, a lot of AI art here on verse. So interesting uh, artist here. So again, using AI, I think, to kind of rethink of Los Angeles. There's a Hollywood sign. Here is a baseball game. Life in LA. Th this one was pretty awesome, as we see here. And then we'll keep moving here. To keep this short, look at these planes. Uh, so very cool. Yeah, I've been to LA only once actually. It looks like LA to me. Uh, there's nothing like getting off the airport for the first time in LA. Uh, you go, oh, this is LA. Anyways, let's continue. Here's 0009 on verse 2, Urban Artifact, and I brought up a few of them. Uh, so here, we've been looking at a lot of these works actually the last couple of months, so now they're on verse. So nice work there. Uh, people in the subway, not exactly sure what's going on here. People kind of in midair. And here 
Uh, never saw this one. So interesting work by 0009 on verse. So nice work there. Uh, 950 sorry, $950 or 0 0.28 ETH. Uh, so cool work. And here's uh, Danielle King, who of course I follow, Eros C'est La Vie. Interesting wedding work here. A beautiful photo and again, looks like an AI artwork. Uh, it's starting to get almost, the only reason you don't think it's a photo is because it's so perfectly kind of art artified in the ceiling here. Everything's almost perfectly, a little too perfect interestingly. And so then you go, oh, that's probably AI. Otherwise, it's starting to get pretty darn convincing. Let's continue here. This is score with what looks like almost like another wedding theme. This is AI. And look at the background here of these figures, these AI figures, quite a beautiful, beautifully textured work uh, by, uh, by score, by sorry, by Skamra, by Skamra. As we continue to run through here, here's Juana Pedro, Zodiac Wars. This is my first AI collection. This is on Zora. Again, kind of would hang well with no hygiene. Very experimental AI artwork here. It's very interesting. As we move into the physicals, Ricardo Passaporte. Uh, cool work here uh, from It's Not a Gallery again. Uh, Ricardo Passaporte via Stefan Simkovitz, interestingly. So It's Not a Gallery. Uh, we keep coming back to them. We really keep coming back to them over here. Uh, here's PP Universal done by Machine. So a cool, uh, I guess maybe not a collab, but just a portrait here. And so there is PP with all of the tattoos and everything beautifully done here by Machine and interesting white background. So a physical uh, and so very cool there. And here's Ray Klein quadruple dog. Interesting piece here too. Uh, as you see here, uh, physical artwork, tiny. Looks like a very small artwork, so just interesting. Ray Klein, quadruple dog, more mysterious artwork. Here's Bondozo Bandito, who we've looked at a ton here, uh, experimenting. Here we see some abstraction on top, abstraction on the right, and then the figure, this kind of cartoon airbrush figure on the left. For those who are about to paint, we salute you. Indeed, it seems to be always painting. Moto583, who we've looked at a ton too. Super interesting artist here. And here we see burgers and cat and dogs and everything. Just more mysterious from that awesome artist. And here's Donnie O'Donnell, uh, mother and daughter, Nan and Goose from Glendale, California. So maybe a commission. Uh, who knows? Uh, but we've seen this artist. Nice border there too. Uh, just a beautiful painting from that very interesting artist. Here is Zozo. Uh, borders. So this looks like a physical, doesn't it? So here we see what looks like a blue painting on kind of a interesting kind of wall background there. So interesting piece from Zozo. Uh, interesting colors and shapes and everything. It does look like a Zozo. And here's one Vi Victoria, Victoria Whitme on Zora. No Copa, no Debert. And here, I think we looked at a work of theirs last time. So interesting, just kind of uh, loose painting here uh, and kind of enigmatic in a landscape and different little landscapes in the square. Just interesting piece, 17 minted, not bad. And that is your show, my friends. Again, I may take off Friday just to make artwork. So let's see, uh, and just to take a little break here. It may be time. So thank you once again for joining me. Hopefully I see you in the space in a couple hours. Until next time, take care. Thank <laughs> you.